very fucking Christmas, right? Not that I should be surprised. Patterns repeat themselves until you learn your lesson from them, right? I just picked my dad out. I don't even know where to begin. I'm trying to get there. Trying to get to in the beginning, right? Because it's his pattern. It's what he does. So it doesn't surprise me. And we're just going to go ADD because who, who am I kidding? It's, it's who I am. The thing that I'm struggling the hardest with right now is the grief of knowing that I'm not going to have my mom in my life either anymore. And it's still just the grief of a loss of a relationship, right? Even if it's abusive with my dad, just like with Dave, that I didn't let myself like break down crying like this, right? So it's okay. And my therapist just shared a really good <laughs> Instagram post with me recently, too. Which, here, I'll see if I can find it and share, and then I'll tell the story. So, this is the one that she sent me. Few people talk about the grief that comes after ending toxic relationships. Intellectually, we know it's for the best. But we also have suffered a deep loss and I don't understand. It's like this knowing that it was going to happen anyways, right? Like I said that I was going to cut them off at the new year. And you know, it's just like, well, you're just going to cut them off a little sooner. And my mind's just racing and jumping back and forth right now between what happened and that's why I can't quite get it out yet. But I was going to say that I'm alone and this sucks, but I have to remember I'm not alone. I am somebody who loves me so much. Like, literal, unconditional. And that's the healing, right? And I know she's a big part of my healing. And I know that's part of her path here in this lifetime is to help me <laughs> heal the generational abuse and end it. <laughs> and her coming in is giving me the strength to do so. And the comfort to not be alone right now in this moment when I feel so completely alone. And the crappy part is, is I still feel like I'm not completely done. Because the trust still isn't changed over. And I don't understand why. And I don't understand why that money is just still sitting there. And Dave's still technically in my life via the children. So I'm still not quite there yet. With cutting out all abuse and my stomach's growling and I need to eat because I need to be making food for her right and my stomach's growling because I'm hungry because it's almost noon and I've barely snacked on anything but some crackers and some vegan delicious cheese and spinach spread that Francis brought to me yesterday. And there's literally nobody that I can call right now. That I can think of that I can call right now for comfort. Because it's Christmas. The thing is, is 
I don't even know if there's any, like, I don't even want to hear any words necessarily to comfort me. I just want to, like, cry it out. So it's just going to be a, just be, sit here, sit here in it. So as I've said with my dad, because I'm a storyteller, right? So I got to give some background story. At the end of every family vacation, he would find a way to pick a fight and get in my face yelling and tell me how I ruined the whole trip. How I ruined the whole vacation, how I ruined the family vacation. Because it's his pattern, right? Not once did anybody ever call the police with the yelling either. As many times as my dad has yelled at me. In a hotel. And for whatever reason, that's fine. That was the meant to be of my life, right? And I've been strong enough to get through it. And it makes absolute sense, right? Like, why I'm breaking out in the rush. The expectation of the narcissistic onslaught, the narcissistic abuse, that, hmm, lo and behold, came to fruition. So, As you know, my parents offered me, quote, their Honda Pilot. With all the conditions that came along with it. So I refused it. So I didn't know that apparently, I don't my mom had said that she was going to sneak me the money to use towards the surgery to have the tattoos removed without my dad knowing. So usually then my mom will, you know, find a time to, to sneak and give it to me. And she hadn't done that yet. So I asked her about it. So she was in the kitchen doing dishes or something. I think, or no, she was helping me clean off Hobbs' shoes. So my dad was in the living room. The kiddos were, were playing. My dad was holding Lily. And I was in the kitchen with my mom. And I just asked her, like I whispered and asked her if she was still planning on that. And she said, the 2800 Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to give you a check for that. I was like, what do you mean we're? And she was like, your dad and I. And I was like, I don't want it if it's from dad. I said, I won't accept any more gifts from him. And she goes, oh, well. And I was like, I thought you were going to do it. And she was like, the 3000 And I was like, well, yeah, the almost 3000 that I already paid for, for the surgery. And she goes, well, I couldn't move around any more money. We moved around the 2800 to give you. And I was like, I don't want the 2800 from from you guys, from dad. Because you're going to hold it over my head and you're going to throw it in my face. Oh no, we, we don't, we wouldn't do that. We, mom, you guys have done it with everything else. You guys have done it numerous times with the divorce. Saying, well, we, well, we helped you with the divorce. Well, we, well, we helped you with this. Or the breast implants, which then you decided to throw in my face. Dad decided to throw in my face and say, well, we would never have gotten those anyways. And I know I'm an adult now, trust me, because I'm finally, finally getting there. I'm 38. But where do you think I got my shit self-esteem from? Why do you think I thought I needed implants? Because I had shit self-esteem from you guys. Didn't mention that one, but let's talk about how my dad said that my hair was messy 
when it was my naturally wavy hair. Yeah, that's right. But my mom, who literally can't leave the house without makeup on, and her hair done, and doesn't like pictures taken of her because she's making funny faces or whatever. And I was like, Mom, you look beautiful no matter what. You look beautiful when you make those funny faces because that's you. That's part of who you are. And I said, I didn't tell you the real reason why I was breaking out in the rash. Because I don't have a single memory from Christmas because they were so dramatic that I can't remember a single thing from Christmas. The only Christmas memory that I have is after dad was screaming and I threw up my my, Chris, my Christmas dinner on my plate and then you took me to, to go see Beauty and the Beast. I love those. Oh well, we had lots of good, good Christmases after that. Mm. I'm gonna beg to differ, and I said that's why I'm breaking out in the rash because my body is basically going into PTSD, expecting abuse to happen. And I said, and you're over here talking about my cousin Jacob who's got some tumor with his eye or something like that. My mom's like, oh, poor Jacob. Oh, he's been through so much. He's been through. And I go, do you have any idea how bad that hurts to hear that? Do you know how you reacted to me with the rash on my hand? She goes, well, yeah, it looks like it hurts. I said, no, that is not how you reacted. Two years ago when I had this on my hand, do you remember how you reacted in your kitchen? And she looks at me, I go, you said, well, how do you work with it like that? So here I am going, oh, my mom cares about me because it hurts when I work and she's wondering how I work in pain. Oh, no, mom. Then you said, what do you do? Wear gloves? Your patients let you work on them looking like that? You were disgusted by me, by how I looked, instead of having compassion for me, being in pain. And so my mom and I are in the kitchen having a moment, right? And of course, my dad can't allow that because he's a fucking controlling, narcissistic asshole. And yeah, I don't really give a shit. I'm pissed right now. So there's going to be some fucking name calling because I'm pissed. And that's where it fucking sucks too. And that's where being an empathetic person sucks. Because I am fucking pissed and I can feel myself holding back being pissed. Because I'm having compassion for him and what the fuck he went through to be such, like, a fucking controlling asshole. <laughs> and it's like, well, what on earth, like, did he go through? <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> that the person who abu who's abusing you, you feel bad for because of what they went through? Yeah. <laughs> The joys of being in a bath. So my dad comes in with Lily and sits down. And I'm obviously upset. Or no, sorry. My dad comes in the kitchen with Lily. My apologies. And I said, Dad, I need a minute. And he was like, yeah, okay. You, you know, we'll, we'll. And I go, Dad, I need you to leave the room. And give me a minute. And he continues to walk into the kitchen, over to the bench sheet, and sits down with Lily. I said, Dad, I need you to respect me and leave the room right now and give me a minute. Oh, well, we just need a second. We just, I need you to leave. Well, I'm not going to leave. So I get up and I walk over to go get Lily. I said, you need to leave my house. Well, I'm not leaving your house. You need to get out of my house right now or I am calling the police. Oh, fine. Go ahead. Call the police. I'm not leaving. And he stops and he turns around and he starts approaching me. 
I said, get out of my house right now. I am calling 911. I'm calling the police. And he's getting in my face, yelling, going, fine, go ahead, call the police. I'm not, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. So I took out my phone and dialed 911. And he goes, what is she? She's going to call the police? And my mom jumps in and telling him to go wait in the car. Because, of course, she's going to go to his rescue. Because it's her pattern, right? It's what she does. So I now have 911 on the phone. And he does leave and he does go outside. And so they're asking me. And I'm crying and Lily's crying. Sorry, trying not to jump ahead. So my dad does leave at this point and goes outside. And I said, you know, and they're saying like, so I think what happened is I called and he walked out and I hung up. So Mason non-emergency number calls me back and says, you know, we received a call from this number. And I said, yes. I said, the person that I was calling on just left. I said, if they will come back, I'll, I'll call back. Oh ma'am, you're obviously like you're in distress. Or she goes, ma'am, what's your address? And I said, I'm fine. The person that I was calling on just left. Like I repeated it. I said, the person I was calling on just left. If they come back, I will call again. Oh ma'am, you are distressed. What is your address? And here's where me goes. Why didn't you just give her your fucking address and just let them come? Because part of me goes, well, what were they going to do if they did come? Are they going to think I'm silly for calling because my dad was getting in my face and refusing to leave my house? Because basically went back into that hurt little child mode of like, well, am I going to seem like I'm silly for calling the police in this, in this moment? Even though I have somebody who is being verbally aggressive and I've got children in the house to protect as well. And she said something about, we have 3838 South Stewart Circle, is that your address? And I said, no, it's not. And she said, well, that's where it's pinging right now. And I said, I'm fine. If he comes back, I will call again. Why didn't I just let them come? That's what they're there for, right? To keep you safe? So literally, yeah, now I feel like I'm shaming myself for not just letting them come. And I feel silly for thinking, like what, thinking that I didn't have the right to call? Like, that's still, like, the issues that I have to work through. That's what they're there for. So my dad goes outside. So my mom is in Callie's room finishing packing. And so I go in there. I said, you realize that that means that I have to cut you guys out of my life. Because I will not let him treat me like that anymore. Did I say that part about the Christmas? Did I forget that? I might have forgotten that part about in the kitchen when my dad was leaving. Like, when I went to go get Lily from him. 
And he goes, oh, well, what a great way to end Christmas. If this just isn't a great way to end Christmas. Because it's his pattern, right? That's what he does. And that's when I said, you need to leave my house. Well, I'm not leaving your... You need to leave my house. I'm calling the police. Fine, go ahead. Call the police. I'm not leaving. And he, like, turns around to get in my face. Which is also why I kind of wish I just would have let them come to show him my follow through. Because now I feel like I fucking chickened out and didn't finish calling them on him like I should have. Let them file a fucking report. Again, probably should have done it to let them file a report against him. I don't know if they will for yelling. But maybe save my mom, you know, in the future. I don't think she would ever call the police, though. He's done so much shit to her, and she's never fucking... (sighs) So I go to the bedroom. And my mom's writing out the check. I said, I can't take that. Well, this is for help for... It's from you and dad. I cannot accept that. Well, just just take it just in case you need it for rent or something. Mom, if you hand that to me, I will rip it up. I'm not accepting it. I said if it was from you, but it's not. It's from him. And I will not accept that control over my head. Well, what about the, the, the car seat? We can go install. I'm not accepting anything. Further from you guys. So she ends up taking the check back. Because I was like, if you give that to me, I will rip it up. Because there's no way in hell. I'm keeping that around just in case, right? To let them hold that over me. That's allowing the control to continue. I said, I refuse to allow the abuse to continue. You might be okay with letting him continue to abuse you and whatever dysfunctional relationship you guys have going on, but I am no longer okay with it. I am not letting it continue. I wish that you could see that you deserve so much more and that you don't deserve the abuse. And she goes, oh, so let's see. Because there was a few things. God, this stuff is, like, the way that he has gaslit her is just fucking. So I didn't hold back with saying stuff. Like, I actually fucking spoke up for a change and said, you realize that him saying things to me like, well, this isn't just all just on your this isn't all just on your mom this is also on me about the car you realize it's gaslighting mom you realize that none of that none of that was on you that was all him but he had to make it seem like it was also your fault and you know why he came in the kitchen right Because he can't let you and I be together because he has to control you and isolate you because we might talk about things like we were just doing. Just like how when I call you, I can't even just speak to you anymore. He has you so isolated. You now put it on speakerphone. He has you so controlled, you can't even talk to your own daughter anymore. You don't go anywhere without him. He basically has you kidnapped, mom. 
I wish you could see how strong you are and how amazing you are and that you don't need him. You were the breadwinner. You were the one who made all the money. Oh, but we couldn't have done any of that without your dad. What are you talking about, mom? You're the one who made all the money. Yeah, but, you know, if it weren't for your dad, he, he let us. He supported me making all those moves. <laughs> yeah, so he can follow you around and mooch off of you. You could have done all of those moves without him. Like, seriously? That's the kind of brainwashing that he has over her? Well, I let you make those moves. Well, I let us. Why? Well, that's not support. Of course he wanted you to go take the job from, from Michigan to Colorado to make more money. Of course he wanted you to leave Michigan and go to Illinois to go take a job that made more money. And to isolate you. I didn't say this part, but of course. To isolate you from any friends that you may have made at that job. said, Mom, you were the breadwinner. Oh, but he always found jobs wherever we went. What? Minimum wage? Working for as a checker at the grocery store for minimum wage, Mom? That's not supporting. You were the one who brought in all the money. You were the one who took care of the household. You were the one who took care of me. I was the one coming home making him TV dinners. He didn't do anything. And then I did say this one. I said, how would you feel if I was still with Dave? How would that make you feel if I was still with him? She got a little teared up and she was like, well, I, I wouldn't because that's how I feel. About you staying with dad. Because you deserve so much better. You don't deserve. I said he is an abusive asshole. He is a narcissistic, abusive asshole mom. He is an abusive narcissist. And I repeated it a few times. I said you deserve so much better. And I wish you could see that. And I said, I love you. She told me she loves me too. She said, I am here for you. I wish you could see that you deserve so much more. And that you could be here with me and the kids who actually love you unconditionally. And so she's backing up and she walks out of the room and she goes, you know, we really did want you to have her. And I said, mom, I have no doubt in my mind that you, that you wanted me to have your vehicle for me and the kids. But do you understand why I can't accept it from him? I cannot allow the abuse to continue. Because if I do, he will then use that to control. And this is what he does. Sorry, my brain keeps jumping back to the fact that I should have just fucking let the police come. And then I'm stupid for not just letting them come. <laughs> and then I'm stupid for thinking that I was somehow, like, didn't have a reason to actually call them. And I'm trying to give myself grace because I understand that that is part of being the beatdown child from the narcissist, that they do that to you. And then I no longer have to be that way. And then I am proud of myself for calling the police when he was literally refusing to leave my house after I told him multiple times, at least three times, he said, I'm not leaving. Call the police. I'm not leaving. 
So then I actually did call the police. And he looks at my mom and yells, what, she's actually calling the police? You're goddamn right I'm actually fucking calling the police. And that's why I think I'm mad at myself for not calling is because now I'm like basically like feel like he won by me backing down and not calling them like I should have done. Fuck. So we're in the hall and my mom says that about the car. I said, it's okay, mom. The universe will find a way to give us a vehicle. We'll be safe. And she wanted to install the car seat. And I said, Hobbs is safe. Trust me, he's safe. And we were hugging at that point. Part of me really hurt. Hurts that my mom's not strong enough. That she doesn't love herself enough to leave him. told her I love her. And that I am here for her. If she ever needs anything, if she ever does decide to leave me, I am here for her. But I know he has her so brainwashed. It's her fucking money. The money's not fucking his. <laughs> and he's using her money to control her. And make it seem like, well, we, what did she say? Well, we wouldn't be where we are if it weren't for your dad. What are you talking about, mom? You're the one who made all the money. Oh, but he supported every move. Of course he supported it. So he could follow you and mooch off of you. You're the one who actually made the money. You could have done all those moves on your own without him. <coughs> But I see that because I'm not stuck in her swirl, right? And I don't want to be stuck in the swirl anymore. And do I hate that I do cry? That I let him get to me like that when he yells? Yeah, but... It basically does send me back into that little child mode. But at least I called the police. I don't Okay, give myself grace for where I'm at. It is really funny that I don't shame other people, but yet I'm sitting here like shaming myself. <laughs> that shouldn't be surprising either, right? <laughs> so, my mom's still finishing packing or whatever, and so I do know that grandma yells at Callie and I want her to know that she doesn't have to tolerate that and that she can that she can call the police because she told me that when she wakes up she feels scared. And I hate that and I don't want that for her. I don't know how to do it. I don't know if I should just keep them and be like, nope, they're not going with you, they're staying with me. If you don't like it, take me to court. Maybe that's what I should do. Because the police can't come and take them from the house. He would then have to take me to court for not adhering to the orders. But then I think about when they go to school that he could just pick them up, right? That's why I don't do it. Because then he could just go pick them up from school and keep them from me, too. And I don't want to do that. And I don't want to make them pawns in the... The shit between Dave and I. It's really hard. Because you never know what the right thing is to do. Especially because you're kind of swirled in it, right? But I gave Callie the phone that I have for her. The extra phone. 
and it's in her purse that you can't see through. It's in her little white purse. And I said, do you have somewhere that you can keep this and keep it hidden? So she's going to put it in a drawer that she said that grandma and granddad don't know about, that nobody will know about, that she can keep the phone so she can call 911 if grandma is ever yelling at her and she feels scared. She may go in there and call 911. And I wrote down on a piece of paper, 911, the number to call. Because she said, what if I forget the number? So anyways, sorry, in all this, Dave gets there to pick up the kids. <laughs> Hobbs tells me, I love him, he goes, I kicked Beep and Neil in the knee <laughs> for yelling in your face. so hard right <laughs> Get to know what the right thing to say to that was I said thank you dude for helping keep, keep me safe I said that's why the police are there right so <laughs> because I also don't want to make it my four-year-old's job to protect me right that that is what the police are for another reason why I do wish I would have just let them come But he's so cute. He literally came up to me. I don't know when he did it, but good for him. <laughs> At least he doesn't get in this world. <laughs> he he told me, he said, I kicked Beep and Neil's knee for yelling at you in your face. I kicked him in his knee. That kid. But again, I don't want to adult, adulticize? What, what's the, you know, make him feel like he has to be an adult and protect me. Because that's not his role. His role is to be a kid and just to have fun. And it's my job to protect him, right? So I put 911 on a piece of paper and she said, you know, well, okay. So I said, and then, you know, if grandma's yelling at you, you may call the police and they will come and protect you. I said, and they can call me and I can come pick you up. And I don't know how that works. I don't know if they would have to go to CPS first and then, you know, end up with me full time or what. Like, I don't, I don't know how that works, especially if it's a grandparent. I don't know. I really don't know how that would work. But I do want my daughter to know the number to call for the police if she's ever scared like this. Lord knows I just want a big bright bubble around them to keep them safe always. And um So I wrote down Dave's address and I said when they ask you where you are, this is what you tell them. You just read this letter for letter, number for number. So I wrote down the address because it's an address with an apartment number. And I said, just like how we live in Mesa, this here says Phoenix. But you can just tell them P-H-O-E. Like you could just read this. Num like read the numbers, read the letters. So... And then she was like, well, you said they can call you, but how do they know who to call? 
is it? Oh, that's a good point. I will write down my number as well. I know you know my number, but just in case you're worried, you know, that you're going to forget it, here is my number. And I sing her the, the song again that we have to go along with my phone number. So she has it. And I do feel like that's a lot to put on a seven-year-old. And I don't know if it's the right thing to do. But I also want her to know that she's safe. And that there are people to call to keep her safe. Because if I call, if she calls me and I go to pick them up, they might refuse to let me take them, right? But if she calls the police, the police can keep her safe. And it's just so hard because so much of me really just wants to, like, keep them they did tell me on our walk today. We went on a little adventure walk. That they didn't want to go back to dad's. Both of them said they didn't want to go back to Dave's. Cobb said it first, actually. He said, I don't want to go back to dad's. I said, me either. I really don't know what the right thing is to do there. But now she at least has a phone. And she knows where to keep it. And she knows the number to call. In case she needs somebody to keep her safe. Because nobody should ever be yelling at her either. And my mom, so my mom said to me as I'm helping out Callie. Well, they don't, they don't touch them do they I said hit them no but it's not okay to get in somebody's face and yell at them either mom that is also abuse so that was anyways to, to trace back because my mom was in the entryway and Callie was in the entryway and Hobbs so when Dave got there Hobbs did go outside with with daddy after telling me so he also told me again when we were around the corner because he said it again he said it once right as I was like calling the police to make my dad leave in the kitchen Hobbs was kind of standing by the kitchen and I was standing in the entryway and Hobbs goes I could be in the in his knees for yelling in your face and I'm guessing I didn't quite connect that I think that's when I was on the phone with the police so I think I was a little distracted so right before Dave got there and my mom's in the bedroom and we come out of the bedroom and Hobbs comes up to me again and he goes I kick beep and kneel in the knees for yelling in your face I said thank you sweetie Word. I said, oh, see, that's the thing. I feel like it's not like I want him to know he can always defend himself, right? Like it's okay to defend yourself. I said that I like I will call I will call the police to keep us safe. It's mostly just because I don't know. I don't know what the right thing to do is, what the right thing to do there is, right? To say, because he should always be able to stand up for himself, and I don't want him to think that he can't. <laughs> and do I think it is kind of sweet that he came to my rescue, and at some point in there, when I didn't even notice that he kicked beep and eel, and then he... I do. I did that with my, with my, I didn't kick my dad, but I used to scream at him and tell him to stop when he was abusing my mom. And again, when you're in the swirl, maybe they didn't even realize I was there. They probably didn't even realize that I was there in the doorway of the, the time that I talk about in the bathroom. 
this little bathroom in this little apartment, 7595 East Peakview Avenue, 80111 in Colorado. Littleton, Colorado, I think it was. And standing there in the doorway with my dad, like, over my mom. My mom's, like, crouched on the toilet, and my dad is hitting her, screaming at her. That's why I said I thought Croatian was a bad word because of the way my dad used it because he would call her Croatian and slime bucket and bitch and yell and scream and hit her. And I was standing in the doorway screaming at him to stop. I bet they didn't even realize I was there. Because honestly in that swirl that just happened with my dad... I didn't even see Hobbs kick beat the in the knee. But, so then, I did say, I said, you know, like, about calling the police to keep us safe. And that's what they're there for. To call, we'll call them to keep us safe. And, so then Dave got there. So Hobbs goes outside immediately with Dave. So then, Callie was there. And so Dave's waiting for Callie, like, in the doorway. And my mom's packing up. My dad's outside by the vehicle because I kicked him out at this point. Again, it's fine. I did my best in that scenario. Do I wish I would have just let the police come? Yeah. But seriously, me is thinking, like, maybe I didn't have enough reason to call them. I asked Callie, I said, do you want a couple minutes to talk about what just happened before you go? She was like, yeah. So I, I told Dave, I said, Callie would like a couple minutes to talk about what just happened at that. And I can hear Hobbs telling Dave about oh. Beep and Neil yelling. And I don't know exactly what he was telling him, but I can here and basically telling him the story about me Benil yelling and me calling the police. So I asked Callie. Aww. Just lots going on in my head of like, should I be telling this to Dave about what happened and saying that you know, I called the police and that no one should ever be yelling in, in anybody's face. No, because he does that and he's not going to see it, right? So, that's where I went from. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that the universe gave me the little nudge. It's like, all right, girl, it's time to cut the abusive, the abuse out of your, your life. It's time to end the narcissistic ties, right? Fresh. Time to end the narcissistic ties. And that was the other thing in the kitchen. I know I'm still ADD, but when I was talking to my mom about my cousin Jacob, I said, you're sitting there and you keep saying, oh, poor Jacob this, poor Jacob. Oh, he has to go through this surgery now. Oh, he has to. I'm like, seriously? Like, but nothing for what I'm going through. Not once. Oh, but we care. We We care. By what? Shaming me for the way that I look with the rash? Like, are you fucking kidding me? So Callie and I went and sat on the couch and we talked for a few minutes. And that's when we said, you know, that's when we came up with the idea for the phone. Because she, she made mention about grandma yelling. And I said, 
I never want you to feel unsafe. And I said, would you like to have your phone to take with you so that you can call 911 if she does that so that you feel safe? And she said yes. So I gave her her phone. I gave her a charger, which, note to self, I need to order a new charger. Um, so that she can just have that one and keep that one. And then that's when we came up with the plan that she can keep her phone and the charger in her purse. But so she can keep it where grandma and granddad don't know about it. And she was like, well, you know, can I tell daddy? This was, uh, I said, well, can I ask you something like an honest question? If daddy knows you have it, is he going to take it from you? Is he going to let you have it or is he going to take it from you? And she goes, he'll probably take it from me. And I said, well, then you probably shouldn't tell dad either. And I hate that, right? Like, I hate, I hate making her keep a secret from him, like encouraging her to keep a secret from him. But at the same time, I want to keep her safe. And I want her to have that. And I want to trust that the universe will always keep this bright light safety bubble around them, right? And she might have to start bringing a little backpack to, to school so that she can put her phone in there and bring it to and from. So I'll talk to her about that next time. She can just bring a little mini backpack to school. And keep her, her purse in there. He doesn't, Dave doesn't need to know what's in there. Because what if she ever needs it to call the police on him? So that's what we were on the couch and she kind of cried a little. And she told me that she feels scared when grandma yells. And so that's why said, you know, let's get you your phone. And I said, even though you can't call other numbers on it, you can call 911 on that number always. She said, you know, but what about it being charged? And I said, it is charged right now. So if it stays off, it'll be charged. He said, but I'll give you this charger to take with you. I said, so that means no, like, not using it to watch like videos and stuff on it when you're with your dad you can do that when you're here but when you're with your dad it's just for calling 911 for calling the police and i said i will still get you a watch phone so that you can call me I fucking hate that that got lost at his house so much but i will just buy her another one i just feel like then it's a lot to make her keep track of the bringing back and forth because she always has to remember to bring her glasses back and forth and the thing is the same I would just have a pair of glasses here and a pair of glasses there but I mean she goes to school now so that's why they go back and forth but if that was the case of having one here and one there they'd get lost because that's what happened with her watch phone she did great when I made her keep it and like keep bringing it back and forth with the charger in her lunch. And then the time that I asked her, like, would you like to just leave it at your dad since you have the other phone here? She said, yes, that's when it got lost. So, and I don't know if, if Dave or Sam did something to it. I would like to think it's just because they're super messy. But it also wouldn't surprise me if he made something happen to it. If he made it disappear so that she didn't have it because it was her connection to call me whenever she wanted without his control, right? Because right now she can't call me whenever she wants because she has to do it on his phone. So it's the same as control, right? Because then he knows what we're talking about. And when we talk, and she can't just call me whenever she wants. So I wouldn't be surprised if he did something with the phone. So we chatted. And then my mom and I basically 
said goodbye. That's the hardest part. But I can't make her see. I can't make her wake up. She has to want to wake up. She has to want better for herself. And she doesn't see it. <laughs> she literally said, well, the only reason... Well, your dad played a huge... The only reason why we, are, why we are where we are is because of your dad. What are you talking about? <laughs> Back in the bedroom. You're the breadwinner. You're the one who made all the money. But yeah, but your dad supported every move. Yeah, so that he could follow you and mooch off of you. You could have done all those moves on your own. Like, seriously? That's the, like, the brainwashing that he has over her. Like, he was doing her some gift of letting her move for these jobs? Are you fucking shitting me? <laughs> oh, a healthy partnership is encouraging of that stuff. But yet, he must have made it sound like he was letting her do it. And she's way deeper in it, right, than me. And even more and more deeper in it because that that's true, right? Because when you're out of it is when you can start to see clearly. So that's why he never wants her to go anywhere either. Because when you're out of it, you might start seeing things clearly. So anyway, so Callie's there, and I'm basically saying goodbye to her to go back to Dave's, and I'm saying goodbye to my mom for the last time. And that's the thing. Leaving Dave was hard, right? That was. That was really hard. But in that moment, And the thing is, is, it took that moment, too, because even after me going to the hotel room for those four nights, part of me was still asking people, well, can they change? Well, can they? Can they? Like, is there a chance? And people would be like, no. No. And yet me still, like, in this world, even after saying I want a separation. I still hadn't officially said I want a divorce yet, right? And there was a large part of me wondering if I should have even let my parents come over for Christmas. There was. It's like my soul knew. My soul knew what was coming. It's like when you don't leave a job that you're not supposed to be at anymore and the universe forces you. <laughs> so. My mom and I were basically saying goodbye for the last time. And I told her I love her. And. So Callie went out with Dave. So my dad's by his vehicle out in my driveway. Which, yeah, I could have still called the cops because he was still on my property. Could have made him actually drive away and leave. But I don't think I should have done that. He wouldn't have right because he would have come back for my mom. Because she wouldn't leave him. And he wouldn't leave her. So... And I don't know if they file a report for something that minimal. I don't know. But, so I went out to go say bye to Hobbs because I didn't really get to say a proper goodbye. He was tired. You could tell he wanted to go back to sleep. 
Can I mention I'm all blinky thing? Suck it on his thumb, hand down his pants. It's self comforting. So I said goodbye to him. He said goodbye to Lily and gave her tons of sweet kisses. And then my fucking asshole of a dad. So I turn around and he's now in my mom's face yelling at her outside. So I pull up my phone to call 911. My mom's walking back in. She's like, don't you, what are you doing? I was like, that's abuse. He's yelling at you in your face. No, he's not. He's not doing anything. Just stop. Then the fucking asshole has the nerve to go over to Dave's car and go say bye to Callie. Mom's fucking pissed. Like you fucking asshole. Stand the fuck away. Like Mama Bear was coming out for sure. And I don't know what my mom forgot back inside, but yeah. So that's the thing. So we both came back inside. It was before. So my dad was over by his vehicle and they fucking pushed the boundaries, right? That's what they do. Just that much more mad at myself for not actually calling the police. I know. I know. Still gonna feel the feel, though. So... That was the thing. My dad was in my mom's face, so I don't know what she forgot, but she came back in. Or maybe she was just still bringing more stuff out. And I can hear my food beeping, and I am so hungry. And it's now I've been on here for an hour talking. My stomach was growling an hour ago. And all I kept thinking... Is the fact that it's 12.45 on Christmas. And I'm alone. And I know I'm not alone. I know I'm not. But when you think of Christmas, you think of holidays, you think of family, you think of happiness, you think of... It's what I was crying about last year, right? Like, I want family. I want togetherness. I want it so bad. And I know I'll have it. I know. I just need to grieve the loss of this stuff right now. And I need to be okay with just letting myself grieve. And letting all this shit go. Because it's basically me knowing that this is the end of the abuse. From my dad. This is the end of our relationship. But what comes along with that is the end of my relationship with my mom. And I know I even deserve way more when it comes to that. Because she enables the shit out of him. And she let him get in my face and scream at me and say things. We talked about that too. And I said, this is his pattern. This is exactly what he does. Just like at the end of every single vacation. That's how he would get in my face. And pick a fight with me and tell me that I ruined it. Exact same thing. Nothing new. And I'm not letting it go on anymore. said you enable him I'm not letting it continue so we're in the entryway this is when Callie had already gone outside I see my dad like basically like getting in my mom's face and doing this and doing like, the threatening the controlling right because it's what he does My mom came back in for whatever she was getting, so I'm inside with her. And I just told her again. I said, I love you. And you deserve to be treated so much better. I said, think about that. Think about how you would feel if I stayed with Dave. Because that's how I feel about you staying with, you, with him right now. You don't deserve the abuse. You deserve so much better. 
that she has shit self-esteem, right? That she doesn't understand that. And it's such an addiction, and it's such a swirl, and it's such a... They basically beat you down until you're nothing. And then they'll say, Mom, is this smart, wonderful, amazing, loving, caring, super successful. <laughs> well, we wouldn't be where we were if it weren't for your dad supporting the moves. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. Without your dad's support. What? What do you mean support? He supported all of the moves. <laughs> God. I said you realize that's gaslighting. <laughs> and she doesn't. I know she doesn't. But I just hugged her and said goodbye. And I know she was emotional too. But she's choosing her abuser. She's too scared to be alone. And I said a lot of what I felt like I needed to say. And I won't let it continue. And I will continue to do my best to try to end things with Callie. And Hans and Dave and his parents. And I just, I don't know. I'll do the best with what I know. But it really is. It's like grieving the loss of somebody who's still alive. I'm sure there's some sort of grief for my dad. I don't feel it right now. I don't. I'm fucking happy that he's out of my life. The hardest thing that I'm struggling right now is knowing that by cutting him out, it means that I also have to cut my mom out. Even though I know I deserve better from her too. I deserve way more love than that too. I get it. I do. She was so enabling to him. She let him treat me like shit. She let him get in my face and scream. She was there. She didn't stop it. She let him do it. That's abuse too, because I deserve way better than that. It's literally that pose. The grieving of the toxic relationship. Even though you know how bad it is. Thank God for her right now. Like, seriously. And I know she knew. She just to sleep through it all, too, which is great. I mean, she wasn't earlier. She was crying when I was crying when I was on the phone with the police. And I do. And yes, I'm going to shave myself one more time, but I know I'm doing my best in the moment. Should have just fucking let the police come. That's seriously me who thinks that I don't, like, have enough reason to call them. For what? My dad getting in my face and yelling and telling me, refusing to leave my house. They at me seem like it's silly for calling the police or something like that. Yeah, but I let it go. I literally don't even know what to do the rest of the day. Besides just air in the fucking loneliness. Because there's nobody that I can even imagine being around right now. Because I sure as fuck don't want to put on a smile. And a lot of me feels bad like I'd be ruining somebody's Christmas.
<laughs> and I don't even know who I would like call. Like, Kari's got her family. Kate's already in her own swirl. And she's always the one who's like, oh, here, don't cry. You don't need to cry. Don't know. Like, I just need to fucking cry right now. <laughs> I guess I'll sit here with myself and hold myself. <laughs> Let the higher self me hold me and give me oh. the hug that I want. So, I will go do that. Thanks for listening to my telenovela part three. Ending more narcissistic abuse. the room because he has to come in there and control my mom because that's what he does because he literally has her kidnapped and she can't even be in the other room talking to me she can't be on the phone talking to me she can't she doesn't go anywhere on her own she literally she is literally now 100% completely isolated because there won't even be me phone calls with me on speaker so it is now literally my dad has managed and she has allowed him to isolate so it is just the two of them oh except for when they go to the holiday parties on the street that you know make it seem like they're a normal couple so they can put on the appearance but do they actually hang out with those people and talk to those people and like have friendships with those people Those little street holiday parties are a good way to put on the facade of being a normal couple. Alright, I'm going to go wallow in this grief. Eat some food. Probably just cry a lot today. Maybe eat a little. Cry some more. Part of me wants to numb out with TV and part of me just wants to leave it turned off and let myself just sit in this. And I don't need to be proud of myself, too, for ending the abuse, for ending this generational pattern and not allowing him in our lives anymore because that's when they, they don't respect boundaries. They don't. Narcissists are incapable of that. I knew things were going too well. <laughs> it really is like that when I said that I was, like, waiting for the other shoe to drop because it was too quiet. Like Brene Brown saying, I feel like that's going to take me a while to get over. Because I feel like when things are going good for a while, like in the future as I heal, I'll have to work through that one in therapy. But feeling like the other shoe is going to drop. Because it doesn't have to be like that anymore. And I'm still at a loss, right? Because I still don't know what to do about the trust with Carissa. Because technically she's the name on the trust right now, but the trust isn't even open because the money's just sitting at the title company and I have no clue what to do with that. And But there's one more narcissistic tie cut. <laughs> and it sucks though, right?
to cut your parents out of your life, even though you know it's the right thing to do. But it hurts because it's not what you want, because you want that happy family, right? But just like with him to get with Tanner, I can't allow people to treat me that way anymore. Okay. Thanks for letting me ramble on for my third, my part three telenovela. <laughs> I love you. Merry Christmas. So one was one's with empathy, right? There are definitely, like I said, a lot of things that I deserve to be treated that way. Because she did enable the shit out of my dad and she allowed him to abuse <laughs> And she did. She really did. Like, I mean, she let him drive me intoxicated so many times. She left me with him alone so many times, knowing that he was abusive. He might not have, quote, hit me, but he would physically restrain me like, cornering me against the kitchen counter. That's, that's the main place I remember. I'm sure there were other places too, but. And screaming in my face and not letting me pass him. She let him say shit like that to me at the end of every family vacation. Let him yell at me. Let him tell me that I ruined our vacations. That I ruined. I'm sure that I'm sure this happened every holiday too. I don't remember it, but they obviously didn't end happy. Otherwise, I would remember them. But the empathetic person in me just wishes, wishes that she could see. That she's worthy is so much better and wishes that she would leave me. Because I want better for her too, right? <laughs> and that's the thing. I'm not even like necessarily mad at her. I don't know why I'm just in that. Maybe I am mad at her for what she did because she didn't know any better at the time, right? Because when you're in the swirl, you don't know better. But I know now and I can put an end to it. But Lord knows I wish he would leave him and just come move in with me and the kids. And we'll say it because why not? I shouldn't have to feel guilty for saying this. 
I would be completely okay with him dying and leaving her behind so that she could come move in with me and the kids because I don't think she would ever be strong enough to do it. I think that's the only way that she would get any chance for any chance for me on people's life. And it might not be in her journey, right? But of course I want that for her. And is it kind of funny slash not funny that I like can't even respond to my mom's text because I feel like she's just being a martyr. Like I feel like that's her pattern. So there's nothing I can say that's gonna I mean, even just to have called the police, to have them come and, like, escort my dad, like, keep him there and tell my mom, like, finish packing and leaving just to make sure that I was safe, like, right? Just, just all the things. I don't know. And too funny. The rainbow after the storm. Hi, at least I have that little video is a last little positive memory of my mom and my kiddos. Fresh air and sunshine, much needed. Part of me wants to go for like a little hike in Papi Go. Part of me wants to curl up in a little ball and not leave the spot. Part of me wants to go turn on TV and them out. I'm trying to challenge myself not to go watch something. To let myself feel the feels.